Hello everybody and welcome to day two of seven days to die. You'll note that we're still on uh, the very early hours of, sorry, very late hours of day one, moving into the early hours of day two. Uh, just to give you a bit of an idea on what to expect when it comes to the night. As you can see, all we're basically doing is just digging out uh, from where we left off at the end of the day one video. I'm not going to dwell too much on it because basically all I do is just dig out. There, there's nothing much more that I do here. Uh, just keeping an eye out every now and then if any zombies uh, appear. If they come too close, just to stop what you're doing. Just until uh, you've, they've passed by because they can pick up on the noise. But this is just to give you a little bit of a glimpse. We'll, I'll leave it running for a couple of minutes once I've given the introduction. And then we'll move straight on to the day two video. Now you'll notice that it starts at about 10 o'clock for the day two. Uh, I did raid a building at about 2 a.m. But the, not, the lighting was so bad that I decided to keep it off camera because we're running a multiplayer server with the settings of 2 a.m. start. If you're running a standard setting, it's 4 a.m. daytime for yourselves. Uh, but if you do change the settings to the ones that I, I've done, then 2 a.m. will be where you start. But the lighting still isn't that brilliant at that time. But hopefully you get a bit of an idea as to what you can do at night time. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to do it. The other thing you can do is just leave it sat in the um, corner or something. Wander off for a couple of hours. Uh, game time hours, that is. It'll probably take you about 10 minutes uh, in real time, 10-15 minutes. And then you're not far off daytime then and you can move on to what we cover. Uh, when we raided the first building, I did pick up on a weapons cache uh, in a garage, which is really good for us. Uh, it gave us some more weapons and stuff like that, so that was really good. But other than that, everything else you'll see will be done on camera. And hopefully, you shouldn't have too much of a problem working out where we're at. If there are any questions or comments, make sure you do leave them. If there's anything I can clear up or anything like that, I'm happy to comment on. I check out the comments all the time, and I try and get back to everybody who has commented. Uh, sometimes there are some things that I do miss on these, so I apologize for that. But hopefully I don't miss too much. And day two is just more pretty much of the same. But there are a few little bits and bobs that we do do differently. I will go through the skills as well in this video. So you have a bit of a better idea on how I do my skills. But you don't necessarily need to follow them. You can do your own skills if you want to. It's, it's all down to how you want to play it. But at the end of the day, I've practiced with these skills that I've used. And I can certainly get through... I think it was day 70 on the first wipe of this server using the similar skills that I've done now and I got through absolutely fine with no problems whatsoever. So just bear that in mind when we do go through this that you don't have to stick to the skills that I choose. But, you know, there are some advantages to doing the ones that I do do. So without further ado, let's get on to the day two and hopefully we'll help you guys move forward on your own gameplay. And as I say, if there's anything that I haven't covered that you need covering, just, just send me a comment and I'll make sure I get back to you over that. See you all shortly. Welcome back to day two. As you can see, we're on about half past ten. I've just spent the morning uh, looting a few houses. As you can see, we've gathered some stuff. Uh, we have took some hits. And as you can see from the... Oh, garment bag. Missed that one. As you saw from the night video, there wasn't really much we could do. Uh, we got iron boots, so we'll keep the iron boots on. There wasn't really much we could do at night. So it's now all about the daytime. Getting as much as we can before the next next day starts. Always checking things like behind them. Right, we're completely full now. Oh, we got blunderbuss. We don't need them. We don't need them. Okay, right, I'm going to head back here now. We've just spent the morning basically looting a couple of houses. That's all we've done. Keeping an eye on uh, your over encumbrance because as you can see, we're over encumbered now, so we're slower, we're using more stamina to get about. So you're going to be a lot easier to hit by zombies. Just bear that in mind. Uh, try and keep yourself under encumbered if you can. But, unfortunately, you can't always manage that. So we'll just head back now and I'll talk you through our perks that we've chosen already. Um, you can 
take your perks as and when you get them. As you can see, we're nearly at another level now, so we'll get another perk soon. So I'm going to take you through the first few that you get at the start that I'd suggest doing um, to help you on your way. So let's just get in here. Oh, I keep hitting it. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Excuse the E. So I'm just going to drop off some of these stuff here. Stuff that we can use at a later stage. Keep all the stone. Don't need any of them. I've got a few wrenches, so I'm going to get rid of that one. Okay, so we don't want that in our backpack. Uh, what we can do is we can use the bandage. Our filter, we'll use the bandage now. That just tops up our health. I'll discuss about our health shortly. Okay, right, we need another chest. So let's just build ourselves a second chest. Your storage chest. There we go. Second chest. We'll just pop our extras in there. Uh, we'll pop the feathers in there for now. The beer in there, forged iron. We don't need any of them. We don't need the iron either. I'm going to drop the steel pickaxe for now because we're going to use that tonight. Uh, we don't need it just yet. We'll be using it down there. Now, as you saw in our night video, this is pretty much all we got to because we're using primitive tools still. And we'll be using primitive tools for the first couple of days. Well, let's discuss about the perk system and what perks we've chosen and why. So, you get one point in all of the top ones. And we'll discuss the last one in a second. Realistically, there's not much in perception that you're going to need straight away. You can take the Lucky Looter and Salvage Operations if you want. They're two good ones. Lockpicking, Infiltrator, Animal Tracker, Penetrator, stuff like that. You, they're things that you're going to want to worry about at a later stage, personally. You can go down any route you want with your perk system. You don't need to go down one that, um, that you know someone else has necessarily gone down with. If you're playing uh, multiplayer then you can bounce off each other with different perk styles and stuff like that, so you can kind of offset each other's weaknesses. However, there are some things I'd suggest all of us get at the start. First one is Sexual Tyrannosaurus. This basically here means it reduces your melee and tool stamina use by 5% and power attacks by 10%. Just that little bit that helps you keep your stamina down. And one thing I did forget to mention was, is I did get hit by a zombie, so I am infected, so I need to find myself some honey. Uh, now, someone did comment, uh, and I do apologise that your name has slipped me, but they commented on the last video saying you can hit the um, stumps, and it'll give you honey. So we're going to check that out, and see if that'll give us some honey. But back to our perks. So yeah, Sexual Tyrannosaurus, definitely worth getting. Reduces your melee and power attack um, stamina usage, which is good for us. Pack Mule, just give yourself that little bit extra by carrying three more. If you want to get some more as well, so you're getting less reduced, then I'd suggest more in that, but one at least. Now, minus 69er is a plus. If you want it, get it. I get it because it increases my block damage by 30% and tool damage by um, 10%. Obviously, at night time, we're going to be using our tools, so I want to be able to just break them down a little bit quicker, so that's just my personal one for me. Um... One that you definitely, definitely need is Healing Factor. Now you notice as we were going, we were on 40 out of 102. I'm slowly healing. Every 60 seconds I'm going to get one health. Really useful, because if I go about doing my daily stuff now, my health is going to be topped up nicely. The little black bit here is affected by first aid kits. I used to be able to have food and it used to increase that as well, but now it doesn't increase it anymore. Um, I believe you can get health from food, which we can check that out now. So we can use the can of dog food. We'll eat that. Yep, so our, our health is increased, but our max health hasn't increased. We've got an air drop. As I said, if you've set your air drops to one, one a day, which it is for this multiplayer game, then you'll have one a day. Otherwise, it's one every three days. Them air drops are really useful, so we're going to check it out. Let's see where it is. Oh, it's... It's close. It's close, and then we can go to our trader as well. And we can discuss about the trader. Let's just finish off where we're at. The other thing I'd suggest getting is Iron Gut. That'll just reduce the chance you get food poisoning. It also reduces your food and water loss by 5%. Really, really useful. So now I can go 
probably a day and a half without getting anywhere near low on food and water. If he's struggling to find food, this is a definite. And I'd suggest getting a second one as well if you can. The other thing it does as well is it reduces the amount of food poisoning that water and food give you. Really, really useful. Especially later down the line if you get iron gut, you're pretty much secured eating anything then. Well, let's go and check out the airdrop and see why it's so useful getting the airdrops. I'm going to fast forward it because all I'm going to do here is I'm going to run straight to the airdrop. Um, if any zombies get in my way, I'll kill them. But other than that, we're just going to go ahead straight over there. So I'll see you all over. Okay, welcome back, everybody. And I'm just going to try and grab this now. We've got to be careful. When I ran over here, there was a bird just there. So I'm going to grab this. See what we got. So the last thing we got is glue. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to press R on it straight away. Oh, look at that. See how much we got there. Oh, we got another zombie here. Let's just take you out. There we go. Oh, you took a lot of hits. There we go. Right. I think we're fairly safe. We can avoid the bear. Let's just get ourselves out quickly. Okay, right. That's a pig. Bird's well over there, so we're safe. We're safe. Let's just get on top of here so we can see our surroundings. Let's see if I can find a stump as well while we're heading around. I can't see a stump just yet. Possibly one over there. Right, let's have a look. What did we get? We got a wooden bow, so it was better than our primitive bow. We got some more. Uh, we got some iron arrows. We got an iron sledgehammer. Iron spear. Nice. Leather leg armor. We'll shove that on now. Pump shotgun schematic, we'll use that. Military armor parts. Cornmeal, we got some food. We got honey, so we can just grab that honey now and we've got rid of the infection. Or at least the infection's going. Some more food, we got a hunting rifle and some more 7.62 ammo. It looks like we've got some more 9mm as well. So, really, really good. So what we can do is we can start taking out the pigs if we want. From here, we're in a really good position because one of the other buildings we got gave us a lot of ammo and weapons as well. We got the crossbow that we've got here from one of the buildings. We also got a double barreled shotgun, an AK and a pistol. Now you'll notice I haven't got the AK or pistol on me. I don't really have a requirement for them right now. Um, I'm not facing a lot of zombies. I'm going to save them up and I'm going to use them on the Horde Knight because the Horde Knight should give us plenty of uh, XP that we can have. Because the zombies are going to keep coming and them zombies are going to give us XP. XP is going to give us some more points. And then we can do some more stuff. What I am going to do is I'm going to check out the vendor. And I'm going to just discuss. Well, I'm going to discuss a couple of things. One thing before I do head to the vendor. Is one of the things I didn't cover. And this is the last part of our thing. Now as you can see we've got nothing else in any of the other ones. These are all perks we're going to get throughout. And that's down to how you want to play it. I'll give you some hints and tips. If you'd like any hints and tips whatsoever on any of the perks, just let me know and I'll go through some stuff. The one thing I haven't gone through yet is this here, books, which is the last tab. And uh, we've got two books already. We got them in two of the buildings. The first one I got was the Shotgun Messiah book. Volume 7 is what I got. If you get all seven volumes, you get the eighth one automatically. These books are great. Check out which ones you've already got because it won't tell you if you've already read it. Um, and if you do get du duplicates and you play multiplayer, you can share them with each other. The one I got was targets full health take 20% more damage. So before I hit a target, it takes 20% more damage on its first hit. Really useful. They're all really, really useful. The other thing I got was the wasteland tre treasures, which is harvesting coffins for bones, jewelry, and precious gems. That'll be good to sell to the vendor. Now, I did drop... Oh, I didn't carry it with me. I did put away the, the gems that I did have. That's not a problem because we can still see what the vendor has for us and where it is. So, to save you time and just watching me running up this road, I'm going to fast forward now to the vendor. All I'm going to do is run up this road and hopefully this road will lead us to the vendor. If not, we'll have to go a bit off cross country. But I'm going to head that way and I'll see you all when I get there. Okay, I was actually a lot closer to the Trader Joe's than I expected, so it was just literally over the hill. So we're going to check out 
There we go. What this guy has. Now, Trader Joe's has changed slightly um, to Alpha 16, I think it was. There are destroyed stations here that you can take stuff out of, but sometimes you do get ones that aren't destroyed. Uh, that one's also destroyed. But I've got a workbench schematic. Look at that. Excellent. So I haven't wasted my time with my thing yet. And I'm getting schematics. Uh, we can use that. Uh, we can't do anything with that, but we can use the forge if we want to. We can smelt some forge. Smelt some forge. Smelt some iron in our forge. So it's worth noting. And uh, we got a vending machine there. Not really much cop. You can buy some stuff if you've got some money. Okay, so we know this has got a forge. So one thing I suggest doing is getting on your map. Zooming right in. Right click here. Save waypoint. And I usually just find myself a picture. I usually find this here. Trader with forge. Okay, that'll do. So I know it's got a forge there. So what we can do now is we can talk to our trader to complete our quest. Let's head on up here. And let's see why traders are now so much more useful than they used to be. Okay, so may I see your inventory? Loads of gear that we can we can sell stuff to him if we want to. And we can buy stuff as well. We've got no money, but we can sell some stuff that we've got. So we can sell that stuff if we want. Um, and we can check out what they've got. And they have a secret stash now. And there is a, a perk that gets you different stuff in the stash and cheaper stuff in the stash as well. Uh, usually some really good stuff. you got books. We can have a look at all of our all section. And there's just absolutely loads of stuff we can have a look. A mining helmet, really useful. It'll have a torch on it. Cement, mines, mix. Another mining helmet there. Another mining helmet there. So some weaponry, some... Um, like, what do you call it? Uh, decorative, that's the one I was looking for. Decor. Loads of useful stuff. More ammo. So stuff there. But the one thing that the trade Joel is good for is jobs. Buried supplies, avoid them with a passion. Right now, anyway. We are not good enough on our mining to be able to find the buried treasure easy enough. You can get a perk that reduces the circle at which it finds it. And also, if you're quicker at digging things out, it makes it a lot easier. Clear zombies, quite easy. Fetch, even easier. I suggest if you're going to do missions, it's get the fetch ones. I could really use some help, friend. Okay, so the name of them isn't the best, but don't forget this is still an alpha game. One of our operatives had to stash their, their shipment at House Burnt 2. Go retrieve the shipment and return it to me. Thank you. We'll, we'll take that. I bet you wouldn't do this for just anyone in the wasteland. Okay, yeah, you're just creepy. So now we've got a little white icon on our thing, which now just turned orange. Because it's an active one. So now we can head over. Now it's one and a half kilometers away. That's a third distance. Right now we're not going to do that because it's half past two. And for standard settings on players, you're going to have, what, five and a half hours? You're not going to be able to get there, do it and get back before it's night time. So that'll be our day three job. The reason why we're going to do it is because it should give us decent XP and it has good rewards as well. So what can you do now for day two? I'm not going to bore you by just cutting down trees, but that is what I'm going to do. But what you do is down to you now. I, I'm going to top up my supplies because I'm going to need them for later in the build. Because we've still not got ourselves a decent house. Uh, rifle martyrs. That's another thing you can do. And you can go hunting some more stuff. So if you feel like, you know, oh, okay, I've got enough to keep me by, but I want some more. Then you can come around and you can start hunting in these buildings here. This is a soft point. I'm not going to break through the metal door. I'm just going to break through the window. Also gives me a chance to see before I jump in there. Whether I'm going to jump on top of a zombie. Give myself playing to your room to get in and out. Now. Let's have a play with our double barreled shotgun. Bear in mind, weaponry is noisy. 
And he's dropped something for us. And we've got another skill point to use. Fantastic. Oh. So it sounds like we've woken somebody up. Let's find where he is, because he could pose a problem for us. Must be outside. There he is. Boom, one shot. Okay, right, let's go and check out what's inside the building. Now, if you've got a shotgun like this, you're a little bit safer, because obviously the range is great. Have we got any ammo? No, we don't. Break this here. Go. We're going to take our loot. Look at this. Leather gloves, forge schematics, mining helmet. Is that an actual working mining helmet, or is that just a schematic? That's a mining helmet. We don't need you anymore. And use you so we can build ourselves a forge. And we've got ourselves plenty of armor as well. We've also got ourselves a new challenge, a strange note I found while looting. It's from Crazy Jake Clan. Hey survivor, you come into possession of this note, then you should know we've been tailing you. We like your style, but before we roll out the red carpet to our camp, let's see if you can handle this little test. Crazy, and I li like it, Jake. Kill some nurse zombies. We can just accept that. So if we find nurse zombies. It's not going to count. If I remember rightly, unless they've changed it now. That's the rally point. Where's our missions? Should have missions. Quests. Head to the rally point. So we've got a rally point. It's your 500 XP and 350 Duke Casino tokens. If we do that. You have to go to the rally point for it to count. They'll spawn. Oh, oh. Look at that. Oh, he's flooring again. Okay. Just not fall down that floor. Always check out for them areas like that because they will take you by surprise. If you drop, it's, it's going to be a nightmare for you. Because more often than not, you'll drop into zombies. And you won't be able to get yourself out. You'll have to fight your way out. Medical supplies. Oh, fantastic. We need medical supplies. I don't trust them, ever. Right. There's another backpack. And we are over-encumbered yet again. We've got cells. Or clothing. I don't want you. Edit you. We'll keep the pallet boots for now. Just it may be useful. Can wake him up. Right, we're gonna have to break this down, I think. If you got a lock pick, I believe, can you? No, you can't. That's one thing they should do is be able to pick locks. It's doing nowhere near as much damage. There we go. Metal door's down, so it's now just a wooden door. Let's get this smashed down. We want to really do that one as well, but I'm not going to bother at the moment because that'll take us up there, which will have some loot as well. Bear in mind, zombies can also drop down from there. And they will more than likely drop down from there. There's going to be a zombie here. Oh, there's no zombie here. Oh, we can get up there. Oh, there he is. Come on. There you go, you're down. There's no loot around here. Nothing around here. We can get up here. No loot around here. But we can get to... Sounds like there's a... Uh, wolf around oh yeah there you go we'll avoid that while we can just a case of just looting all this remember keep an eye out for a zombie there we go we got two zombies there we go both of you down and we got plenty of shotgun ammo at the moment 
So you don't have to use your shotgun, you can use your pistols and whatnot if you want to. I like to save that kind of stuff, we got more ammo there. Yeah, I like to save my ammo if I can. Because you, you just, you can gather so much more. Looks like there's a little bit of a wandering horde here. There's a lot more you can do on horde night. Getting XP. But since I want to move around this building quickly, we're just going to get away with using it. So realistically, you're just going to continue with what you're basically doing for the next couple of nights. Oh, that, that dog's going to come and pester me, isn't it? At least that dog's not pestered me. But there should be a downstairs somewhere, so we're just going to have a look for a downstairs here. And I think it's going to be here. It's not there. Oh, the dog's attacking the zombie, and the zombie's going to kill the dog. That sucks. Right. Oh no, he's killing the doggy. I don't think there is a way you can uh, actually train the dogs. It's a shame. I think they should bring that in. Well, nothing we can do, unfortunately, for the doggo. Oh, I didn't want to drop down into it. Just bring ourselves back out of the way. Oh, there's the entrance, anyway. There we go. This is what I was looking for. And that was the doorway there. More ammo piles. Shotgun safe. Weapons bags. Look at this. Wow! Okay, so that zombie's gonna smash some up. We'll let him smash the way out because it'll give us a way out. You can let him just break our way through. Now, we have no pick lock picks. You can break that if you want, but I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna make a note of it on my map. Waypoint, any picture, locked, safe. So I know to come back. And I'm going to continue emptying this place out while he breaks up up there. Yeah, it looks like there's nothing down here, really. Hey, Bale, if you want one. Yeah, that was it. That's all we got. The room above is more useful for us. Let's just... Break this down, see if it's got anything useful. Uh, got a decent pistol, I know it's better than the one we've got. Okay, right, let's just use the bandage so we've got some room. A bandage. Oh, I don't need to worry about the rocket launcher parts. Grave digger mod. 50% more damage against dirt. That's actually really useful. So we'll eat some food. We'll continue. We'll keep that as well. And we can just break this wall here. Right, so what you do now is down to you. As I said earlier, you can choose to continue scouting more gear like this. You have to keep going back and forwards to your building, uh, to your safe location, unloading. As you can see, now we're so encumbered that I'm barely running, and I'm walking really slowly. This is going to eat into your time. Now, if you look, it's now ten past five. Had we gone to the rally point, we'd have probably got there by now, but you wouldn't have got back in time, as well as completing it, because you've got to obviously clear it out of the zombies, get the things, and then get back to the trailer, or at least back to your safe location. You can camp it out if you want to, but uh, obviously, it, unless you've emptied the building and you know it's empty, you run the risk of having zombies in a building that you're trying to st stick to. So I'm going to I'm gonna collect more wood. That's all I'm going to do next, is just basically... That's a weird 
whole thing there. I'm just going to avoid that because that looks dodgy. So I'm going to collect more wood ready for our horde base. Or at least ready for securing somewhere for our horde base. Because there's a couple of things we can do. If you're running on a longer day like I am, you have got time to build a horde base that's going to sustain you for your first horde night whilst giving yourself a chance to get plenty of experience points so that's what i'm going to aim to do so you guys get a chance to have a look at a horde beta build as well but so i say if you're looking at me chopping trees down because that's all i'm going to do now for the remainder of the night and then i'm going to do a fast-paced night video for you guys to see what i'm going to do on night two which is basically just going to work on what we've already done uh, hopefully we can manage to do that without having too much trouble with zombies uh, we also need to build some torches as well because the only lighting we have at the moment is the light that we've got downstairs but bear in mind lighting does attract zombies so we don't want too much lighting so that's it for this video as you can see we have gathered so much stuff it's so good to get yourselves in these buildings and get yourself um practicing hitting a zombie at a distance that's not going to affect you back obviously we took a few hits but you can see we've managed to deal with that now we've got a couple of bandages we can keep them on us and we can um stop bleeding if we get bleeding in the future but we've got so much stuff now as a matter of fact we can break these down because they're just brass we've got some juke tokens we've got some bolts which you can use hunting rifle another ak we've got the iron sledgehammer i'm gonna break that pistol down put that one in uh, we've got some more food as well which is good for us more ammo lots more ammo plenty of ammo now organize it a little bit put in what we can here i don't think we're going to get anything we've got some grain alcohol some blood bags so much stuff that we're going to be able to do on our next uh, kind of outing let's just pop our food in so we don't lose it we've got leather we'll keep hold of that first day bandage We'll pop that on there like so. We'll keep hold of them for now because there's some stuff we can do with them, empty cans. Food, more food. We've got a mod there that we're going to be using. And we're going to save that mod. You can put that on a level 2 um, shovel if you want, but I'm going to keep hold of it for now. Sledge I love the sledgehammers. Ammo. We don't need the bow and we don't need the ammo for the bow. Oh, we've got two sledgehammers. We'll keep all the ball for them for now. And some glue as well. Loads of stuff there. Absolutely loads. So we're in a really, really good position. So hopefully you've seen how day two rolls. It's giving you some ideas as to what to do. If you've got any questions or comments whatsoever, especially if you've got questions about the perk system, you know, are you struggling with doing something or do you think something's a better way? Uh, discuss in the comments sections let me know otherwise if you've enjoyed the video hit that thumbs up and if you haven't already done so hit that subscribe button and i'll see you all on the day two night video where it's just going to basically be a time lapse of what i'm going to be doing plus giving you a few hints and tips about the starter base that we're building here because this here is literally just something for us to work out of. we're going to continue having this probably for 14 days i'd say by the Hopefully by Horde 2 we should have a more stable base that we can continue using. Um, and I'll discuss some tips and tricks along the way as well. Well thank you very much everybody for tuning in on this video and I hope you're enjoying it. Um, let me know in the comment section if you are or if I'm missing something. Well if I don't um, have anything that I've missed or anything then still give me some comments so we can discuss some stuff. Until next time everybody take care for now. Bye bye.